make it a party of three and bring in former BYU quarterback and current BYU football radio analyst Riley Nelson via Zoom on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline. Riley, nice to have you back on the show. How are you? Nice to be on the show. I was so excited when Ben reached out yesterday. Look, I got my game day gear on. So <laughs> that's the Washington game shirt. But, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not it's not quite the jersey with the number on it, but it's the current game day guard. <laughs> yeah, this was from the 150 150 game. This was my favorite polo from this last season. Unfortunately, you know, didn't come away with the win against Washington in this game. But boy, did those Yumis look nice. Riley, I can't think of a better way to celebrate 99 days away from BYU and Utah scheduled to open the college football season in 2020. So on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most confident, how confident are you that the season will start on time 99 days from now? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I can only go off information. I get information second and third hand, right, as it's reported to the media. I don't know that I have any access uh, direct access to the people who are actually making those decisions. I did happen uh, just a couple of weeks ago, had uh, kind of a run in uh, with with Tom. And I can tell you that from the AD's perspective, of course, this makes a lot of sense with football being a revenue driver and how important it is to universities. I can tell you that all those the uh, athletic departments and the presidents of the universities are definitely they're planning and trying to make everything work that it, it does kick off on time and it tries to uh, be at least as close to normal as is safe. Um, so I'm going to be right there confident at, you know, an eight and a half, nine. It starts with voluntary workouts during the summer, typically, right? And right now there would be some guys maybe on vacation a little bit, but you'd be doing voluntary workouts. BYU and other conferences have mentioned that in June they're going to open up. BYU specifically is Monday. How comfortable would you feel with that as a player right now, say you're Jaron Hall or whatever, on Monday going back in and trying to stay safe but also trying to get some work in? Yeah, I I mean, I don't know as much about the virus as I should, but uh, but if, I'm, if I were to cherry pick a few cases, let's take right here in Utah, both Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell tested positive. They had, they had the actual disease. And because they were, they're young, they're extremely healthy, you know, their lung capacity and those things. And, and we don't, again, small sample size, and I don't know much, but me as a player personally, having seen, okay, those guys, they had it, but really they were just, all reports were, it, it was really relatively mild. I wouldn't be necessarily too scared. Now, a lot of players are in situations where maybe their mother has an autoimmune disease or maybe you know, they're, they're being the caretaker for a grandparent or something who's in a compromised situation. I think that would be more of a worry for me than, of course, than, you know, me or one of my teammates actually getting the disease because the data or some of the anecdotal experiences show that, you know, I would be, I as a, an athlete in tip-top shape uh, would be, if I, in the off chance that I did get it, you know, it probably wouldn't affect me to the degree that it has others. Former BYU quarterback Riley Nelson with us on BYU Sports Nation. Football has clearly become a 365 days a year training schedule if you want to be a top tier elite level athlete at Division I or uh, chasing those NFL dreams, Riley. So how much do you think the pandemic will have affected the skill level individually or just the overall execution level of football if and when it does start on time? Yeah, good question. I, I think for young guys, uh, I believe that for underclassmen, it will be a lot harder. I think for your upperclassmen, your guys who have, you know, let's say, call it 10 starts under their belt, I don't know that it will affect them because there's that they've the majority of their um, improvement has already happened. And now they're just trying to get that 1% better every day. I think it is going to uh, hinder an underclassman's ability to integrate into the team to make that progression that they need to within an offense or a defensive scheme and to earn their right on the playing field. I think from a physical standpoint, really, we used to get four, after finals, we used to get four weeks off anyway. Um, and guys would do their own stuff, but it was four weeks off of kind of voluntary team activity. So we're not really behind the eight ball too much as, as far as it relates to a physical and conditioning standpoint. But the, and, and I gotta be honest, I, I'm a believer that I think most quarterbacks and wide receivers, which that connection might be the, the most important one as it relates to the product on the field in the fall. I think most of them have found a way to get together under a safe environment and still work on that chemistry and creating, uh, you know, 
those uh, those relationships that need to happen to be successful in the fall. So I, I think it might be a little bit sloppy, but I, I think it'll be barely noticeable. And we are going to be so happy to just have live sports and football back that we won't even care. Yeah, I, I'm excited for that because I can only watch so much Korean baseball in Bundesliga. Let's be honest. Uh, let's talk yeah. about Zach Wilson. Obviously, first two years uh, of a career are different than the last two years. We expect, uh, as an upperclassman, for him to be better. How much better do you expect Zach Wilson to be? You know, I, I've i thought a lot about Zach Wilson. I've had a lot of conversations uh, about Zach Wilson and his performance. And I continue to come back to the fact that the quarterback is it's it is so crazy because it's the one we focus in on the individual of all the team sports or at least in football which is the ultimate team sport because you share the field with 10 other guys and you're so interdependent upon the performance of those other guys but it's the one that we want to cherry pick and and make his his perform and, and single out his performance when the reality is his performance has way more to do with the performance of the other 10 guys around him than um than any other position in team sports. So I think it, I expected him to take a, take a step forward. Now, what that means as far as production within the offense or passing yards or passing touchdowns or points per game, I don't know because will an outside threat emerge, right? Last year it was kind of receiver by committee and there wasn't anybody that really scared the defense pushing the ball down the field. And so defenses really didn't ever have to worry about that 20 plus yards back and and so it made the intermediate and short passing game the high efficiency passing game real tough because those windows got really tight and there wasn't anything stressed so will someone emerge there are we gonna uh, it was running back by committee with a ton of different injuries last year Is someone gonna emerge it's gonna be a significant run threat that's gonna cause defenses to pull a safety down in the box and allowing you to take advantage of a guy getting behind the defense and getting one-on-one -on -one coverage to push the ball down the field. I think, so coming back to the original question, which was what I expect from Zach Wilson, I think a step forward, both in his physical play and his mental game. Uh, look, the question with Zach has never been his dedication to the game or his dedication to teammates. It's just been like, it's just been inconsistent performance from game to game. And then, you know, some, some instances in big spots where, the ball hasn't necessarily bounced his way. So at some of those things you have control over, some of them you don't. But uh, I know he's been working his tail off. I know you guys know he's been working his tail off. You've had John Beck on. He's been down there with some of the best quarterback trainers um, in, in the country, really working on the nuances and the fine elements of his game. And then I also know he's been working with Coach Grimes and Roderick on what he needs to do to, actually, to master the system that they're running at BYU. So I expect great things from him. The question for me, more lies on what does the unit, the offensive unit as a whole look like. Riley Nelson on BYU Sports Nation. Zach was coming off shoulder surgery as he went into his sophomore season, broke his thumb late last season. It kind of felt like they were just really rushing him to get back. And that, in my opinion, had a significant impact on what he was capable of doing. So Riley, with a full healthy offseason, it, doesn't it feel like a no duh that Zach is going to take a significant step forward as a junior? Yeah, and so I, I yes, I wholeheartedly think that. And then another element why I think that is because he's got two dudes that stepped out on the field and balled out right behind him, breathing down his neck. Uh, to share that, uh, I, I don't know that I can think of a quarterback room in college. I know I wasn't ever a part of one, but even just one of being a fan, maybe the closest thing is like Ohio State a few years ago when they had uh, JT Barrett and Cardell Jones and, and Braxton Miller right? All guys who stepped in and, and won games in big spots. That might be the closest thing in recent football memory, but to look across and these aren't dudes that like have only gotten reps in garbage time. These are guys who came in and stepped up in big games and produced as fellow quarterbacks. And so, uh, and I don't think Zach's the kind of guy that's going to cower or, or that that's going to become a toxic situation. Or I just think it's going to make that fire, that competitive fire of his to burn better, burn brighter. And I also don't think Jaron and and um, Baylor. Oh my goodness, Romney. Yeah, Baylor. Thank you. And Romney are going to lay down and just accept the fact, you know, accept their roles back uh, as being a two or three on the depth chart. I think they're coming for that number one spot. So both for Zach Wilson that we've been talking about uh, over these last couple of questions and the quarterback position at a whole at BYU, I as as good as it was last year with maybe some inconsistencies, I expect the level of play to be noticeably higher uh, 
no matter who it is for the 2020 season. If we see Jaron or Baylor running on special teams in practice, we'll know they have the spirit of Riley Nelson in them just trying to get on the field, right? <laughs> Let's talk about uh, Red was, Alert. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say it was tough for me because I was being – they're all about the same age. I was being re replaced by a dude younger than me. So I was like, well, heck, I don't want to hold a clipboard for my last two years. Let me try and get on the field any way I can. <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of fun. Ended uh, up working out. Okay. Yeah, that was awesome. And uh, you jump in midway through. You know, you never know. Uh, let's go back yep. to 2011, the last 10-win season for BYU. I can't believe it's been that long, but that's what it was. And that becomes a 10-win season on the play known as Red Alert. Uh, we love having former players on to kind of give us some insight into moments that maybe we didn't know much about. We think we know this play, but Riley, uh, walk us through this. And first, let's listen and watch the Red Alert play against Tulsa in 2011. Don't get caught out of position. 18 they seconds. Clock it. He'll fake the clock, throw to the end zone, touchdown, Cody Hoffman. Okay, start. We're going to show the third down leading, sorry, the, the play before uh, first and goal from the seven. Walk us through that play and all the way through the touchdown. Yeah, so right here, this was one of our bread and butter plays. It was called 56 Duo, where on the front side, we just run a stick route trying to get, and Marcus ran a great route. He's just trying to find the zone between the linebackers. As we knew that they were trying to do, you know, he's holding his hands up, but with his other hand, he's holding his foot, trying to make the clock run down. At this point, you notice, I, I, I peeked over to the sideline, but I ignored what they were saying, which was clock it. And Red Alert <laughs> was something we practiced the whole year. Uh, right there, you see I glanced to the left. We practiced it all year uh, going to the wide side of the field. Ross Alpo was up there, and he just had more space to kind of throw a fade ball. That's where we wanted to look. My last glance before we snapped the ball, I, it said about 13, 14 seconds. So I knew I had to be quick. Anyway, when I looked to Ross, the guy was holding him. His DB actually lined up and was staring at Ross. He wasn't looking at any of the other fakes. So he played it as if it was a normal play. So I had to eliminate Ross really quickly, came back. And so I was going to come back to peek at Cody and either huck the ball out of bounds as quickly as I could. And luckily, Cody, when I came back, we kind of, you know, and Cody, it's well documented. We had a good uh, little connection. He got his eyes back. He saw me look, stopped, was able to throw a back corner as luckily Cody's DB, because he was so much closer to the ball, he got caught up in more of the fake of it all. So he got uh, really anxious trying to recover to cover the deep fade, which allowed Cody to stop, throw the ball back pretty easily, and, and the rest was history. And then the last thing I'll show, it doesn't show me running off the field, but Coach uh, Mendenhall, with, he didn't want to do too big of a smile, as he never wanted to do when he knew the cameras <laughs> were on it. But he gave me a little smirk, and he was like, and, and a little hug, and he kind of pulled me in and said in my ear, he goes, you're, you're lucky that worked. <laughs> and, and, and of, course, of course, there would be no real punishment or anything in it, but, like, it, you know, he and I had that relationship. I, I am lucky that it worked because the game was on the line, and I went against the direct order from the sideline, which was to block it, huddle up, and call another play. <laughs> so uh, a great moment uh, for, for me personally, for Cody, for that 2011 team to, uh, you know, get af after that, 2000, uh, that 2010, which was tough, going seven and six, and, trying to find our way to get back to the tradition that, you know, Max Hall had set all those years, winning 11 and 10 games to, to get back to that point. Uh, a great ball moment, great moment for program history. And I think they'll be back, if not this year, very soon in, into those 10 win categories against what I think all of us can agree are a lot more a, exciting and challenging of a schedule. Riley, all BYU fans are lucky that you had the guts to uh, make that play. Thanks for joining us, man. Great to catch up with you. Glad to be on. Have a good day, fellas.